Oh, yeah. So good evening once again, brothers and sisters. My talk today is all about a perilous journey, a very dangerous journey in the walk uh, in spirit. And you know, when we when you think of an adventure or a journey, one would think, you know, there's a lot of things in there's a lot of dangers there's a lot of obstacles in the way that you, you would have to pass through in order to get to your destination and it's the same thing with our walk with the lord uh, it is said that our walk with the lord is uh, likened to a race that we must a race that we must finish so we're going to start off now with the scripture so we're going to start with uh, isaiah 59 Let's start. And we're going to read verse 1 to 4. So, behold, the Lord's hand is not short and it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, and he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue has much with perverseness. None called just for any period of truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies to conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. So first, you know, as we go along this journey uh, that the Lord has set us on, the Lord is always with us. You know, like with the testimony of Sister Mira that the Lord you know, has not forsaken, you know, has forsaken her uh, in her in her life. You know. The Lord showed his power in our lives. And with that, we know, and even this scripture says that the Lord, the Lord's hand is not shortened. The Lord's hand is not, you know, it's not, it's not shortened. It doesn't have short reach, it's long reaching. Then it is very long. It could reach even the farthest. And of course, with his ear, he can hear what we what we pray for. However, uh, the following verses is for those that uh, that that are to be warned. Those who uh, those who are not in the walk. But your iniquities have separated you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you. He will not hear. And well, as I as I was reading this, it's uh, uh, as I was reading verse two to verse four. In verse four, this is the very nature of mankind you know, today. None called for justice, nor any pleaded for truth. They trust in vanity, speak lies, they conceive mischief, and bring forth iniquity. Which brings the which brings the question: In this journey, in the walk with the Lord, we and en we encounter a lot of uh, a lot of attacks from the enemy, the devil, and a lot of people. I, I was other people turn back turn their backs from the Lord and they go back in the world and so happened that Sorry for that. And it so happened that uh, uh, this kind of people has turned their back to the Lord and these are the very same uh, behavior that we see from them. Now we'll go to our next scripture. Sorry for the noise in the background. Matthew 9. Let's turn our scripture to Matthew 9, verse 37-38. And this is what Jesus said to his disciples. 
Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest is truly is plenteous, but our laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, and that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Now, what the Lord is talking about here is us, brothers and sisters. You know, we are in this journey, this very perilous journey. It's not the danger of the flesh, but the danger in the spirit, because as we walk and walk and walk, the devil will try and try and try to tempt us away from the walk, from the path to the journey to the end, the goal. And brothers and sisters, it's said here that the harvest is truly is plenteous, but the harbor the, but the laborers are few. We are indeed very few, brothers and sisters. You know? uh, although there's a lot of a lot to be saved out there, you know, we are only few. And in order to in order to harvest a lot, there must be a lot of laborers, but since we are we are very few. And in this case, the devil's the, the, devil, the devil's laborers are too much, uh, too many. And what what must we do, brothers and sisters? We must work triple time, not double time, triple time, quadruple time, because we must exert more in order to complete our journey in this in this walk with the Lord. And pray ye therefore, in verse 38, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And this one, brothers and sisters, send forth laborers in, into his harvest. That is us, brothers and sisters. So we're going to our next scripture. It's going to be in the next chapter of Matthew 10. And we're going to verse 1. When he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now we were sent into this journey, brothers and sisters. Not, uh, uh, we were sent into this, into this journey with something. The Lord gave us something. And this is the power, the authority that was given to us by the Lord so that we could spread his works in the world okay? and the power to uh, against unclean spirit cast them out heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease the lord has equipped us with a lot of gear in this journey so so that we are very well prepared and verse 5 to 7, these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the gen go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any of the sin of Samaritans, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And brothers and sisters, this is this is one of the goals in our journey with a walk with the Lord to spread his word to spread the good news that the Lord is at hand the kingdom of heaven is at hand and we continue in verse 8 heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead cast out devils, freely ye have received, freely give and this is the authority that was given to us brothers and sisters and we and it, we can even see this with the, our testimonies. We are healed. We are given peace. We are given a comfort by the Lord from true prayer, which is give give true prayer and through the Spirit was given to us by the Lord in order to equip us in this journey, in order to equip us in the long, long long adventure that awaits us perilous very dangerous spiritual adventure the lord gave us the tools in order to be successful now we're going to go skip a few verses and let's proceed to verse 14 and whosoever 
whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when you depart out of that house as you shake off the dust of your feet. Verse 15, Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth a sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scour scourge you in their synagogues. So this is what Jesus said to, to us. And this is describing describing the state, uh, the approaching state of the world today. Yeah. Although at the, uh, there's the approaching state of the world today and, and we, brothers and sisters, why I say that our adventure is very perilous, very dangerous, the spiritual adventure, it's because we are sheep in the midst of wolves, dangers around us. And the, and the devil is always aiming at our necks. <laughs> so we're going to head to Second Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 26. Uh, 26 to 27. In journeyings, often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my old countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. Brothers and sisters, this is what we expect in this long walk. In this long, long journey that we are following right now, this long race that we are following through, brothers and sisters. This is why I said that our journey is very perilous, very dangerous in the spirit. However, brothers and sisters, we must strengthen ourselves so that when so that when the time comes when the devil tries to tempt us, we are strengthened. We are we're ready for his attack, and we are, we are not tempted. And all of these brothers and sisters will come at us in, in this walk. And finally, in our last verse, we'll go to Hebrews chapter 3, verse 8, uh, last scripture. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, uh, sorry, <clears throat> how did not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness? So this is a warning to us, brothers and sisters. It is not to harden our hearts in the provocation. No. The provocation, we, we mustn't, we mustn't yield to it. We mustn't yield to the temptation in the wilderness. As we journey through this, uh, as we journey, we are in the wilderness sent by the Lord in order to spread his word. However, we must remember to not harden our hearts, stay true to the Lord and his word. And all these brothers and sisters, the Lord is there with us. As he, have, as he has given us his Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, to gear us up, to strengthen us, to comfort us, and be there with us in this journey that we are taking right now. We are now then strengthened and ready for the, the long journey, the long arduous journey that we are to face. And all these brothers and sisters, we are experiencing today. And I would like to end it off as a, and this talk is uh, more of a, you know an encouragement for our walk, and praise the Lord for that. Amen.